Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, July is the shortest month of the year. What more can I say? I hope everybody had a wonderful summer. And uh, I know this morning you're in your, your meeting rooms or your staff room in your individual schools, uh, all ready to do some follow-up work from yesterday. And um, ideally, it would have been great for us to have the opportunity to speak in person. But uh, logistically, there's 10 of you and uh, in 10 sites across the division and one of me. So that uh, just wasn't going to work today. So the purpose uh, of today was just to spend some time talking a little bit about uh, things that have happened over the course of the summer, set some context for what you'll be working on this afternoon, and hopefully to start a conversation. And the next time we have a chance to, uh, to see each other or to chat, it would be in person and uh, certainly give you a chance to ask some questions. So what I thought I would start with is just talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that have happened over the course of the summer that might be of interest to you and set the context for your conversation this afternoon. So first of all, if you recall, last June, uh, at the very end of the year, uh, each of you were given a letter uh, that you were asked to distribute uh, to your students from the ministry with regards to a student achievement agenda that the ministry was embarking on and uh, hoping to provide some details on uh, in short order. Uh, over the course of the summer, we've had a conversation, uh, a chance to have a conversation or listen to the ministry give a presentation around the achievement agenda and uh, have a few more details and I wanted to give you some of that information and kind of tie it in with where we're at in LPSD and some of the things that we're, we're doing and plan to do in the near future. But before I do that I thought maybe I'd spend just a couple of minutes just talking about the context uh, provincially and locally just to give us a sense of where we're at uh, before we start about talking about where we're going to go. So first of all uh, we'll talk provincially and uh, the ministry just recently released some statistics around their, their learning outcomes in the province and uh, there, there are some interesting numbers. And, and first of all, maybe talk a little bit about graduation rates. Provincially, the graduation rate has been bouncing up and down around 70%. I believe the last time it was measured, it was 74%. And this last year, the last results uh, from this last uh, academic year are around 72%. And so actually, provincially, there was a drop of 2% in those numbers. Uh, as far as uh, within that cohort of graduates, it's also important to take a look at the results of our First Nation, Métis, and Inuit students, and that graduation rate is about 32%. Those of you that spend time listening to the news and maybe understand a little bit about the demographics of the province of Saskatchewan, you'll know that that number is around 20% of the total student population and growing quickly and projected to, to comprise a large percentage of the student population within the next 10 to 15 years. And so it does uh, certainly caused some concern for the province when our graduation rate for our First Nation Métis Inuit students is, is certainly so low. Uh, also on large scale assessments within the last year, the province of Saskatchewan, uh, when compared to the rest of its provincial neighbours, has ranked 7th out of 10. Uh, and certainly that is something that the ministry is uh, hoping to, uh, to improve upon and is challenged by. And as a result of, of kind of those sets of numbers, the, the Premier and the government has given the Ministry a very clear mandate around ensuring uh, academic success for all students. And, uh, and the words that they've used is that this is an initiative that will not fail. They're very committed to improving outcomes. And I think this is fantastic news uh, for Lloyd Public and for all students across Saskatchewan. And certainly if we can work together and, and focus on individual student learning results for kids, uh, I think that all of our systems will be better for it. Uh, from a local context, just to give you a sense of where Lloyd Public fits in that uh, kind of provincial picture, um, our graduation rates have bounced around 70% uh, on an annual basis, some years a little below, some years a little higher, um, and obviously just slightly lower than the provincial average. Um, if you look at kind of those large-scale assessments uh, like CAT4, um, Lloyd Public learning results or learning outcomes are, are fairly average. We're just slightly above the Canadian norm in, in when you look at the district as a whole or the division as a whole. Uh, certainly we have pockets of absolute excellence and uh, areas where we're still doing some work. But if you, if you lump them all together as a whole, uh, Lloyd Public is, is a fairly average to slightly above average school division when, when looking at the CAT 4. If you take a look at provincial assessments like the assessment for learning uh, examinations that students have written over the last number of years, uh, compared to our provincial uh, colleagues, Lloyd Public is a fairly average school division uh, when you look at results across uh, all of the grades and all of the subjects. So, so really all of that uh, being said, 
I guess the easiest way to sum it up is that the Lloyd public uh, does a really good job with our kids. Uh, we are kind of where we need to be. We're certainly not um, flying high and exemplary, but we are kind of middle of the pack and, and a typical school division from a Saskatchewan and a national perspective. I think it's, it's safe to say, however, that, uh, you know, as I have students in the system and many of you do, uh, we want the best for our kids and certainly uh, we don't strive to be average, we strive to be exemplary and, and if you think about our mission statement in Lloyd Public, you know, ensuring personal excellence for all students, that certainly is a target and that certainly is a target of the ministry as well. So, uh, that's great. What, what does the ministry have in store for us? What are the details? What does it look like? Well, uh, the ministry has talked a, a little bit about a, a strategy from pre-kindergarten right through to uh, grade 11 or grade 12. And they have unrolled, a, or I guess unveiled, a, a set of um, assessments that they want to take a look at, starting in pre-K with uh, some kindergarten assessments focused around uh, kind of readiness for student learning. And uh, the EDI, which many of you uh, in the pre-kindergarten circles will be familiar with because it's, it's uh, something that we have used in Lloyd Public before, is something that the ministry will continue to focus on. Uh, an assessment called the EYE, or the Early Years uh, Evaluation, is another assessment that the ministry will be focusing on. And one called AHA, which is uh, focused more around Aboriginal students and kind of their readiness for learning. The ministry hasn't provided us with a lot of details around that yet, other than to say that they do want to develop a, a narrative or a rich story about where every student that's in a pre-K situation uh, resides in the province of Saskatchewan and, and their readiness for learning as they enter grade one. From a Div 1 perspective or a grade one to three perspective, the ministry has talked a lot about focusing school divisions on the use of formative uh, and diagnostic type assessment tools. Um, and this is work that we have already been working on in Lloyd Public. Uh, many of you, uh, I believe in all schools now, use the Fontes Pinnell assessment as a, a, a way to measure where students are from a literacy perspective. Those are the types of things that the ministry is wanting us to focus on. However, they, they have ratcheted up a step and they've been very clear around kind of the accountability for those results and where schools and school divisions need to be. And, and what they've talked about is they want school divisions to be able to talk about uh, which students are not reading at grade level, what we're doing to support those students, and as a result, uh, the effectiveness of those various interventions that we've used. Uh, in my view, without many details, this is a bit of a game changer for us. Certainly, we've done a lot of really powerful things for kids uh, with regards to literacy and reading, but uh, to be able to sit down and report on a student-by-student -student basis what we're doing for kids and the effectiveness of what we've done, uh, that's something that we've never had to do before and certainly something that we'll have to work with you on and uh, support each other as we work towards that end. Uh, from a Div 2 right through to Grade 11 uh, perspective, the Ministry has uh, unveiled a series of assessments, and, and I'll talk about them by category rather than by grade. So when we look at literacy, the Ministry is looking at a set of assessments in Grades 4, Grade 7, and Grade 10 that all students will write in those grade levels, and it will be focused primarily around reading, writing, and treaty education. Uh, they haven't given us a lot of details around the assessment, and, and I'm making some assumptions around this, and, and I want to be upfront with you about that. But my assumption at this point would be that it's, a, it's one single assessment that captures those three major areas. The difference in this is that out of these assessments, we will get student-specific information back from the ministry that, that they're expecting us to use uh, in planning interventions and reporting on uh, our effectiveness as a school division and what we're doing for kids in those particular areas. The other uh, neat change here is that the ministry has also uh, hired an individual who will come in and work with those assessments to ensure that they're comparable from year to year. So we will be able to look at grade four results and then three years from now compare that same group of students with regards to their literacy levels and see how much growth they've uh, displayed over the course of those three years and then again in grade ten look back and, and compare how they've done in grade seven. The ministry will expect us to set goals uh, for that growth and that's something that again in Lloyd Public with the use of the CAP4 and other assessments through AC over the last number of years, uh, we're used to using data to set goals and I, and I feel very comfortable that we're uh, well positioned to deal with that. When we're looking at numeracy, uh, the province has, has unveiled a set of assessments in grade five, grade eight, and grade eleven that are focused around uh, numeracy skills, problem solving, and critical thinking. Uh, 
Uh, again, comparable from year to year, so uh, we'll be able to look back in grade 8 and see how our students were doing in grade 5 and where they've come since then. Certainly this will help us with transitions and looking for spots in our system that are uh, meeting student needs and perhaps other areas that we need to shore up or work on a little bit. Uh, again, uh, they'll be looking for uh, some plans and some goals based on that data. Uh, in grade 6 and grade 9, uh, the ministry is looking at developing an assessment that's focused around technological literacy and science that all students will write. And again, uh, we'll, we'll be looking at some baseline data in grade 6 and using that to set some goals for grade 9 and uh, also reporting on our effectiveness uh, with regards to learning in those areas as students progress through the middle years. Obviously, uh, this is a, a a big undertaking by the ministry. Uh, it's a lot of assessment development that needs to take place over the course of the next few years. Uh, there'll be an involvement obviously by school divisions in that process and, and you'll hear more about that as we go forward. But I do want to uh, also recognize that this is a, a changing of the landscape for Lloyd Public and uh, as you know we have certainly over the last few years uh, dedicated a lot of time to the CAT 4 uh, and we use the CAP4 a lot in our program planning. We also use the Assessment for Learning program. With the introduction of uh, much more assessment from a provincial perspective, those are all things that will need to be considered and looked at. Uh, we certainly want teachers spending time with students from a, an instructional perspective and don't want it overbalanced with a, a large scale uh, of your time spent towards the assessment uh, end of the, of the realm. So certainly we will have some conversations over the course of the next year and, and beyond with regards to what an assessment plan looks like in Lloyd Public and where the provincial assessments fit and, and where our CAT 4 fits and, and if it fits, those sorts of things. I guess the one thing that I, I want to encourage uh, you to think about is, as we move forward on this is the role of, of our own assessments and, and how we can, we can really support student learning in this whole process. And it's certainly my belief that the more effective we get at understanding our curriculum and developing assessments that are aligned to our curriculum and speak to where a student is with regards to the specific outcomes, the less reliant we will be on external assessments like CAD4 and provincial uh, assessment packages and those sorts of pieces. So uh, as you work through the year and there's opportunities provided to get involved in common assessment development and those sorts of initiatives, Hopefully you'll, you'll see the opportunity there and take up the chance to uh, get involved and work with your colleagues on the, the development of those assessments. So as you, as you go forward today, I, I guess I just wanted to leave you with the message that um, yeah, there's a lot of work to do over the next few years, but the Lloyd Public is in a very, very good spot at this point in time. And, and I'm hoping that uh, today kind of opens an opportunity for us to have further conversations about where we need to go and how we get there. Um, I've probably created as many questions as I've answered, I understand that. And I apologize that I couldn't be uh, with you this morning and speaking to you in person, but again, logistics just, uh, just wouldn't allow that to happen. So I hope you have a great day. I hope you had a great day yesterday. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow morning at uh, the Vic Juba for our kickstart to the school year. And I would encourage you to, to engage in rich dialogue with your admin teams this afternoon. Identify those areas where we need to grow, those things that we need to do in order to focus on kids. And ultimately to remember that we're in this together and it's through the notion of collective responsibility that we will uh, reach those goals that are set for us by the ministry and certainly by our Board of Education. So with that, have a great day. Thanks for uh, listening for a few minutes and I look forward to chatting with you tomorrow.